Hey guys, welcome. So tomorrow we're going to Cinque Terre, which is going to be a little bit of a seaside village with five different towns. We're recording an intro this morning because we have to wake up hella early, but let's check out what's in Cinque Terre. Welcome back to our channel. We're Nick and Anna. We've been traveling full time since 2022, and this week we're doing a few of the cities in Cinque Terre. Before we show you around there, we'll take you through Pisa first. We took a few trains from where we were staying in Florence to start our journey. When you come to Pisa, you'll see that it's just a short walk from the station. But when you see this building, you're almost there. There really isn't much here, if I'm being honest. It's definitely one of those places you can go to, take your photos and make your memories and then head out. I think we spent maybe all of an hour here, and that's including getting a coffee. Yeah, she leaning. She had a hard lean on her. For the best pictures away from the crowds, there's a small coffee shop called Cafeteria e Mercoli. They're also one of the few places you can actually get a coffee here as well. Look at all of these people. Mind the little high five. After we took in Pisa, we hopped back on the train to continue our way up the coast to Cinque Terre. The prices for the regional train weren't too bad, and they can range between, I think, like 10 and 20 euros. Uh, the whole trip there was maybe like an hour, so really convenient. Our first stop was Rio Maggiore. What's your name? I said my brother's been here. To Cinque Terre? Yeah. Are we gonna see all the Terres or just one? We're seeing three Terres. We're seeing three Terres? Okay. Down the long, ominous hall. But first, let's double check our mics this time. Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> Alrighty, so we got to the first stop here in Cinque Terre, which is Rio Maggio. Maggione? Some, I probably said that wrong, my bad. Um, but so the train went underground, we got off, went over under, and now we're walking through this big tunnel. So I guess we'll see what's on the other side. Oh. I am tired. After a quick stop for food, we got to walk around and really take it in for a bit. We made it to Cinque Terre. We got calamari. Uh, and we got calamari. We are starving. Oh, God. There's a bee. Did you just poke your chest in the nose with that? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> so we got some chips, got some calamari. Good eat. Cinque Terre is renowned for its local culture. Each one of the five villages really has its own sort of unique charm and character to it. This is the southernmost village and is known for its colorful houses and narrow winding streets. Make sure you've downloaded some maps on Google or whatever app that you use because it's pretty easy to get lost here. We walked down the cliffside to go toward the water to get a closer look at it and Anna was not feeling it. You okay? Yeah, it's just, you know how I feel about around big rocks. It's a little scary? No. Those of you that don't know, Nick broke his leg on a very giant rock and boulder, so I don't trust him.
As we said in our Rome video, if you check that out, we come during the shoulder season in April, which is generally when we'd recommend coming. It wasn't too hot, and while it was pretty crowded here, the summer, it gets even worse. Spring or early autumn is really the time to avoid the craziness and enjoy a more peaceful trip. From here, we headed to our next village, Vernaza. Yeah, I always know how to walk through a crowd faster than people. Hey, I can't help it. Look at all these damn people. You get cut off really easily. I, I mean, I find you, it's fine. Welcome to Cinque Terre. <laughs> no, wait, what is the name of this island again? <laughs> it's not even an island. What is the name of this town? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. What is it? I'm oh, come you. on. Michione. Are we in the town of Mangiano, Mariano? No? <laughs> Much like the other villages that make up Cinque Terre, fishing is a core part of the culture. This quaint seaside town was once home to many fishermen and fisherwomen. Fisher people. Fisher people. Now, it is home to a thriving tourist industry, as you can see. What do you think the odds are we're getting on this train? Our last stop, Menorola, didn't disappoint either. This town is connected to Rio Maggiore via a coastal trail that we could walk. We walked a little bit of it while we stopped here, but we ultimately ended up taking the train back. Honestly, if you're trying to see all five of the towns, you should expect to make a full day of it. We were here for a good eight hours and we really only got to see three of them, which is kind of a bummer because this is a pretty big UNESCO heritage site. And we really wanted to see them all. If you like what you saw in this video, we'd love it if you hit like and subscribe to our channel. Next week, we'll be showing you around Venice, Milan, and the surprisingly underrated Verona to round out our day trip series in Italy. Thanks so much. That's all for now. We'll see you next time.